Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Sater Survival with Sticky Fan Gaming. And today we're going to go over the kind of new but not super new event, the Alliance Showdown. And basically we're going to talk about what is going to be the best strategy for you to succeed. Okay, so getting right into it. What is the Alliance Showdown event? Basically, it is a, a simulated event where you set troops up on three different lanes and then they automatically fight whoever your opponent are, whoever your opponent is, and whoever has the troops left over wins the flags. And there's six rounds, and after all six rounds, we'll determine who's the winner of you know that entire event. And it seems to happen about every week or so. And there's a couple of different stages. There's the registration stage, and then there are the preparation stages between each different event. And then there's the actual, the event happening, and it's pretty much automatic, so you never really have to, um, you never really have to kind of take account of that. You never have to move any troops yourself or anything, unless you change troops uh, during each preparation phase. There are different tiers. There are different tier rankings. There are rewards for kills or rewards for whatever your rank is at the end. And that's pretty much the summary um, in a short kind of spiel about what is the event as a whole. Now, going over what is the best way to set up your troops that you will most likely win. Um, well, this is kind of a tricky thing because basically as long as you... As long as you have very strong troops with very top tier stats and you buff up, then you should win. Unless you're facing just, you know, a team that is bigger and stronger than you. That's really basically the whole gist of it. Um, right now I'm showing you guys what the rankings are for the entire game. Um, about a week a week ago when I initially recorded this, my Alliance Legion was uh, number 82 in the game. And there's some pretty top tier guys um, that compete. Pretty much any alliance can compete in this, whether you're in a old state or new. So that's pretty cool. You get to compare against everyone in the game. But um, as you can see here for my alliance, uh, 101, we have typically about 10 participants per lane because our alliance isn't like super active. We don't have a whole lot of players, which is okay. And the strategy that we like to employ is whoever's your top three guys in your alliance will wait until the very last day of registration um you don't really have to wait for your last day of registration if you have 45 people that you know for a fact can all sign up for the event at the same time have everyone hit the lanes and leave one spot open for your top guys and then your top guys need to come together to, to determine what lanes they want to hit and then once you do that you as you can see on my screen now I'm using my March capacity buff. I'm about to use my massive March talent. And what it what that is doing is making sure I have the biggest March as possible with my research. All my talents are at war settings. So I'm just setting myself up for I like this is the biggest March that I can do right now. And with that um, with all those buffs and stuff, now I'm going back into the event. I'm clicking register, and now I'm going to whatever lane that me and my guys determined that I'm going to hold. So I think this one, yeah, it was the middle lane. And you want to make sure that you have your top heroes. So for me, um, Trish isn't my top hero anymore. Um, Mika, Miko is. So now I'm putting her as my first one. And my other two top heroes, and then I messed with my marches a little bit, and yeah, I said it, you know. Uh, 158,000 is my biggest march capacity with these heroes and those buffs, and then you go ahead and set up the troops. So then Nimki is going to go and do it in a different lane, and then our other top guy is going to do it in the last lane, and now we have made sure that our three top guys, instead of just taking up one lane and only securing one lane for a win, we have spread each other out evenly, which has increased our chances of success. And uh, right here is the proof in the pudding. 
As you can see, uh, this is a screenshot from the Alliance Showdown before I recorded this one we won. This is the next Alliance Showdown, the one that just completed a couple days ago. We won again. Um, the strategy works, you know. We went, you know, 12 points, 11 flags. We only couldn't get one flag. Uh, 644 million kills. It, it's a pretty sound strategy. I mean, obviously, we have some good stats guys, too, but, you know... We went up to rank 21 in the entire game. The strategy works uh, if you have, you know, the stats behind it and the team behind it. As you saw, we didn't even have full 15 people per lane. We had 11 people per lane, which, you know, we were facing guys who had a full 15 people. So this is really just a video for, like, tips and suggestions in regards to Alliance Showdown. I know um, when the event was in beta, I know it still says beta, but when it was in beta beta and they had us tested out in State 11, uh, we only had enough uh, members in our alliance to fill up two lanes. So instead of spreading our, you know, team across three lanes and having like, what, six people per lane and obviously we wouldn't win, what we did was we made sure we had 15 people in two lanes with Nimki being the strongest in one and then myself being the strongest in the other because we were the two top guys at the time. And then we would let the enemy take the middle lane or whatever lane we left open for free. But all those troops that they put in there were basically wasted. So me and Nimki would have 15 guys on each other side and would take those lanes and we will still win because we will have two flags compared to their one. So that's another strategy that you could use if you feel like you don't have enough guys to put 11 people per lane or 10 people per lane or even five, six, whatever's the case, you know. If, if you don't have a whole lot of people in your alliance or even if you have a ton of people in your alliance but you just want to win the event, put your top guys in two lanes let the enemy secure one lane for free, and then you have all of your, your top-notch guys whooping ass on the two other ones. That's another suggestion you can use. This is still a fairly new event. This is just my tips. You know, take it or leave it. It's up to you. But this is, you know, try it out. Hopefully it works for you. Hopefully you don't face us instead of 11. And as always, thank you for watching. Let me know what you guys want to hear about next in the comments below. There's a video coming up here pretty soon in regards to last weekend's, what's that event called? Uh, Water Raid or whatever it's called. Um, we actually lost for the first time, so that was pretty interesting. The uh, guy that beat us is the number seven or number eight player in the game, Parabellum. So shout out to Parabellum. I'm going to actually uh, have an interview with him soon. Uh, interview with him soon. So if there's anything that you would like for me to talk with Parabellum about specifically, let me know in the comments below. Hit me up on Discord. Hit me up online. I will try to get back with you. Um, hit me up in-game, State 11, Sticky Fang. Um, I will do my best. Um, I do get a lot of messages and whatnot, so if it takes me a little bit to get back to you, I apologize on that. But yeah, again, thanks for watching, guys. More content coming soon. And until next time, this has been State of Survival with Sticky Fan Gaming.